Hi, Liz. Hi, oh. Eight months. So he's given a warm round of applause. Yeah. 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 Y
So he walked around, walked around, and went to see the king of the kingdom, <laughs> Mr. Brad Green, the Angular manager. His grace, Brad the Builder of House Green, first of his name, king of the first dollar scopes, lord of the seven filters, and provider of the realm. So he went to see Brad, and he told him, I want to build an app. And Brad told him, you need a model. And Bonnie told him, an ES6 model? And Brad told him, no, Angular model. Well, what's the difference? Well, you know, in Angular, we have several types, like roughly four things we need to remember. We have the components, directives, in Angular 2, right? Uh, and pipes, which used to be filters, and services. These are the four things we need to keep in mind, and that's it. Just forget everything else you know. And all of these are what we call ES6 modules. Okay, these are the actual files that are scoped by the file. And Angular modules are grouping those files together into one ng module. And those are ng modules. So Bonnie asked, why do I need to group them? And Brad started this long explanation about ng modules. It's first and foremost, you need to group those files because they are the entry point to your application. E every Angular 2 application needs an ng model to start with. Okay, so the boots bootstrap process goes like this. We have the main file which needs to load the app model. This is our first model, which is the root model. Okay, and this is the bootstrap process. So we need one. For starters, we need to know about them because we can't really create an app without them. So Bonnie asks, how do I create one? So Brad opened up his laptop and started the coding and showed him that you just create a file and, um, see I'm doing it with my mind, um, just create a file and uh, import an annotation. For those of you who are not familiar with the, with the syntax, with this TypeScript ES6 syntax, that's okay, you will see it's not that's scary. Now, okay, these are the only lines you need in order to start creating this class, okay? We imp import an ng model, and we annotate our app model with this ng model, and that's it. What is this ng model scary thing? It's only metadata, okay? It's just like an object. We only give it metadata, no logic, and that's it. In order to connect our four types, which are services, components, directives, and pipes into the model, uh, we need to somehow attach them to it. Okay, uh, so how do we do it? First of all, we need to know one thing, that not all of them are equal. We have two groups inside of these four, like, friends. We have the component directive and pipes in one group, and we have the service or services in the other group. Okay, so this, this group, the first group is called declarations. And the other group, if we add other services here, is called providers. It comes from service providers, okay? You need to remember it when you develop Angular 2 applications, when you configure your models. So declarations and providers. Then Bonnie asks, why do we need these two separate things? So Brad started answering with, okay, because one group belongs to the compiler and the other one belongs to, what? It was in Polish? <laughs> yell again, yell again. The provider, yes, uh, it's pretty close, it's the injector. We'll talk about it in a bit. So these are the two groups. And compilers are best friends with the templates. They look at the template and they search for their three friends, which are directives, components, and pipes. Okay, they are working with the templates. And that's why this group belongs to the compiler. This is what the compiler sees. And on the other hand, providers, don't, don't be worried about this slide, just pay attention to this line. The inject, this is what the injector see the services, 
okay, or the services providers. So that's why the services are on the other group, okay? And that's on a high level the explanation of why there are two separate groups. Okay, so when we declare our model, okay, we write these two things we need to remember when we import stuff, we want to attach it to our model so we could use it, we need to remember what goes where, okay? So for, for, for this, I uh, just added a, a component for as an example, I could edit like more component, add here more components or pipes or declarations, and for the providers, I just added, okay, the service. And that's it, okay, Pro declarations, providers, and by the way, you get the sticker, whoever had the courage to shout before, okay? I'll give you the cool uh, dino sticker for the offline. So if you want to shout more, you are welcome. Okay, so, okay, you get the sticker, you get the sticker, everyone who shouts, okay, interrupt. Uh, okay, so that's the way we are attaching our services and declarations to the model, that's it. Uh, and the th second thing for explicitly for the app model is the bootstrap. We need to somehow let the application know who is the first component, who is the root component, okay? For the full version, there are other properties here and stuff like that, but you can just check out this project, Angular CLI, you probably heard about it uh, in Tracy's talk, um, and you just can generate and you will see um, more properties that we'll talk about it in a bit. But so it won't work like this, okay? That's why I added this line. So just generate one, and you will see other properties that we'll talk about them. But again, like I said, this is the root component. This is the first component we need to tell the compiler because it doesn't know about it. So Bonnie said, thanks. Thanks for the explanation. And Brad says, wait. Remember that I told you that I redid all my slides? So the other presentation was, was a bit crazier than this one. This is cute. But the other one was crazier. And I got leftovers from it, and I wanted to reuse them. So Brad in this story will reuse those slides. Yeah, like this one. This is, uh, yeah. OK, so uh, yeah, Bonnie said thanks, I uh, guess, and uh, went to his way. And time went by, and he built his small Angular app. And he came back and said, help. And Brad said, what is it? And Bonnie said, my app model is too big. I wrote so many components and so many things. And uh, <laughs> I feel sorry for her. I wrote all these components and, 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 and what the F fudge, can I say here? OK, <laughs> what the fudge, uh, all of these components. Um, like, these are the declarations. Well, how can I manage this mess, right? And if you look closely, it's just copy-paste. OK, so uh, <laughs> how do I manage all this mess? Uh, so uh, then Brad said, well, you need feature models. What are feature models? So we have our app, right? And our app, when it gets too big, like the declaration file and all the app module, we really want to, to separate it into sub-modules. So we have module one, module one, apparently. <laughs> it's on purpose. Like I told you, I just finished the slides. Uh, so, so we have module one, and imagine that is module two. And um, we split them by functionality. What do I mean? Uh, Brad asked Bonnie, uh, what kind of application are you writing? And Bonnie said, well, I'm writing a llama dating website. Okay? <laughs> It's a website for llama to llama, the funny llamas love since 2016, okay? So uh, I'm writing this uh, dating website, and um, then he said, okay, so um, first of all, if you look at your page, you can see that you can probably uh, start to see some features here, okay? And the first basic level of what a feature is, is first and foremost, the page itself, okay, the front page. So all of the pages, the top level pages of our applications or the top states are uh, features. So this will be a feature called front page. And if you look uh, above it, you see the login page or the login uh, button, which leads us to the login page. And 
This is also uh, a feature. Okay, this is the login page feature. This is how you start separating into uh, features by functionality. So then, Bonnie asked Brad, how do I know when to split them? So like, you know, I have this page and it too has like lots of uh, uh, components and services and stuff like that. So Brad answered clean code. Who read clean code, the book here? Okay, nice, okay, like 15%. Uh, so it's not enough, okay? I really recommend this book. It's a, uh, all the code examples are in Java, okay? But don't mind them. Um, just read the, like, the theory, okay? It's a really great book. And Clean Code basically says that when we have like lots of stuff inside of one function, we need to divide it into sub-functions because that's too long, and we just need to extract it, okay? Who does it in it his or her code, okay? Okay, more people than read the book, okay, <laughs> great. So we just need to divide it and extract it, and this is short and cleaner, okay? So another developer will read our code, and they could see like uh, what's, what's going on. So the same thing, we can apply the same logic we can apply to our app module or our modules in general. So when it gets too big, on, uh, like, and each company, is, uh, like each developer um, in his own company um, needs to decide whether it's, what, what is too big. It could be five, five components, 10 components, how many lines of code, it's individual. But usually over 10, okay, this could be enough, okay. so. Then we, can, we could subdivide it into the front module and the login module, okay? We just extract all of the components that belongs to each other, to each of these modules, and we just separate it, again, by functionality. So when they are getting bigger, we can apply the same logic, right? Right? You want to do the wave again? Right? Okay, <laughs> you're scared from the way. Okay, great, <laughs> it worked. Uh, so, <laughs> so we could subdivide them, okay? If we have a widget and a list, you get the idea, okay? We could subdivide them. So then Brad told uh, Bonnie that uh, if he wanted to subdivide them, he needed to import the new models. And Bonnie asked him, how do I do that? And Brad said, well, go see the old guy in the forest. He's in charge of that. So uh, Bonnie said, oh, thanks, great, thanks. And uh, Brad said, wait. No. <laughs> I don't know. OK, so Bonnie said, yeah, OK. Uh, yeah, um, bye. <laughs> So we just left to see the old guy in the forest, okay? And then he arrived to the old guy who apparently is in charge of the imports in Angular 2. I don't know why, okay? So then he said to him, I want to import submodules. And the old guy said, oh, I see. So you need to use the imports property. And that's it. That's all you need to do. And he explaining how does it work. So when you have the app module and you want to import the login module, okay, you just use the imports and just uh, put the class there, okay? So let's take a look in the app module. So we have the imports and you see here with all the, we imported the login module and uh, we uh, add it into the imports array. That's it. Now we just imported a module and that's it. So now we could use the login page, right? We can just like uh, use the, the component from that uh, module, right? Wow. Wrong, okay. <laughs> it, it won't be rendered, okay? And let's see why. So when we try to load it, we'll see a blank page. So Bonnie, like all of us said, why? And the old guy started explaining how things work in Angular 2, behind the scenes. So imagine this, you have the login model which has components which are marked in C and services which are marked in S, okay? So uh, you have components and services and 
What happens is that when you want to import a model into another model, you need to explicitly mark a component or any other decla uh, declaration as exported. Okay, you need to add it to the exports array inside of the submodel. So then, only then, your model can, could see it. Okay, right? So you need to export. Whatever is not in the exports array is not visible. Okay, and this is by design. So we won't have these collisions that we had in that we have still in Angular in Angular One, right? When we have uh, right. Okay, uh, so, so we have these collisions and we need to namespace them and stuff like that. So let's look at the submodel, at the login model. So in the, in the submodel, we need to add this exports property and just add, add the same uh, login component we added to the declarations. Okay, so it's the same one. Now, will it render? <laughs> the sad group up front, yes. Okay, so, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it will render. Yeah, give them a round of applause. <laughs> okay, no, 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 no need. Okay, so uh, now it will render. Yay, and uh, imagine that I live coded it. Okay, uh, <laughs> so we added into the exports array. You need to remember that, that this is the old guy saying to, the, to Bonnie, uh, you need to remember to just add here declarations. Only declarations, and other models as well, okay? But you can ex re-export models, but that's for another talk. But remember, only declaration, not services. So Bonnie asked him, why only declarations? And the old guy looked at him and went, <laughs> yeah. So after Bonnie recovered, uh, he said, now I can answer, okay. And uh, he started explaining how things work with services behind the scenes in Angular 2. So we talked about the components and the compiler and stuff like that. But we also mentioned that we have an injector. And in Angular 2, what they did from the last change with ng models, they made this big provider's pool for the whole application. One pool, one app injector, one thing to rule them all, okay? So that's what they did. So they added like a big provider pool. So every, are we taking over by SWAT team? What's, what, what's the sound? Okay, never mind, forget about it. Um, everybody down! Okay, okay? We all recover? Okay. So again, we have this uh, app model and the big provider's pool for the whole application. So when you declare sub-models, no matter which model it is, when you declare services in its provider's array, they are being added to the provider's pool when you import this model. Okay, this is a tricky one. It took me like a <laughs> time to understand that point, okay? So again, no, no matter what, which submodule it is, okay, when you declare services on it, they go into the big provider's pool, meaning any other module could inject these services. But that's okay. In Angular 2, we don't, it's not by string, it's by the file itself. So we don't have the same collisions we had in Angular 1. And it, it happens automatically. So Bonnie said thanks and, <laughs> and went away. And yeah, time went by and then he came back and asked the old guy, help! And the old guy said, what is it? And Bonnie said, my app loads slowly. Loads, okay. <laughs> so. Uh, the old guy said, you need lazy loading. And Bonnie asked, what's that? So, and that's another feature we get with N NG models. So he started to explain, okay, we have our, again, <laughs> weird choice by Bonnie. It's not like I ever written that in my spare time. Uh, so uh, we have our <laughs> Lama dating website and with its front page. And let's say that this front page takes like five seconds to load, which is bad for mobile. 
And, but we can identify that, wait a minute, you remember this login page, the, the other feature, right, which we extracted into its own module? We can lazy load this uh, module, and then we'll reduce our loading time from five seconds to less. Okay, so uh, how does it work? Um, so we have uh, two modules, let's say we import them into the app module, and we decide to keep the front page as is, and to make the login module lazy loaded. So we do a nice PowerPoint transition, and it becomes lazy, lazy loaded. And now, when we load our app and we open up the developer tools, uh, we see that it got shortened from five imaginary seconds to this 400 imaginary milliseconds. Okay, we just reduced our app. How does it work? Um, well, I planned for a 30 minute talk, so I didn't write the code for that. Okay, but uh, basically, it's also a topic for a different talk, how to, like the AOT compiler and how to lazy load a, a, a model. So I don't have the code here, but this is reduce, reduces, this is the point I want you to remember, okay? That you can use the tool of ng modules to uh, reduce the initial loading time of your application. So Bonnie said, thanks, old guy. And the old guy said, wait, there's more. And say, Bonnie said, yeah, no thanks, I know where that's going. <laughs> and the old guy went, but you really need to see this. <laughs> and Bonnie looked at the old guy and said, thanks a lot. <laughs> but seriously, are there other things I need to know about NG models? And that's where we arrive to the part that we didn't have time to cover in this talk. I'm gonna uh, create some videos about it also, and maybe like also create another talk only on the advanced stuff. So just so you know what you need to cover more. So there are the shared modules idea, which means that when we have components that keep repeating in our submodules, we need to extract them into one shared module. This is the idea of shared modules. It's pretty simple. But I will mention something you need to, to, to pay attention to. We have another uh, idea, uh, which, uh, or best practice, uh, which is called core model. Um, and that's where we keep our services that we want to expose to our whole app. Like I said, everything goes into the provider's pool. So this is directly into the provider's pool. Uh, and our core components, like the header, the footer, the stuff that we have in our like uh, shell application. I know it's kind of abstract now, okay? I don't have like slides to explain them, but this is the two things we can read about them in the ng models do the documentation. Um, and just pay attention to um, one thing that um, never declare services, okay? And this is the main point I want you to remember when you start uh, experimenting with big applications, never declare services on lazy, uh, loaded, and shared modules. It's supposed to be modules. And that's a whole nother talk just to explain why. But basically, what it, cre it creates another injector, and then you have like two instances of your services. I won't go into that. Just remember this rule, okay? There's a trick on how you can do it, which is called for root. Uh, but again, I don't have code, so it's just talking uh, abstractly. So these like patterns, the shared modules and core module, are suggestions the Angular team wrote, uh, added to the, or the documentation team, uh, more precisely, added to the documentation, the ng model documentation. So just know that they are based on uh, big applications, like in, in past languages, but we, uh, as the Angular uh, community or developers need to uh, take this, uh, th these patterns and, and test them uh, for ourselves and maybe figure out um, if they could be better, okay? Don't, don't treat it as dogma. And if you do find uh, something better other than these patterns, uh, please contribute back to the documentation. Okay, if you want to know more, uh, like I said, I have um, more courses in December. 
in, the, in, in this website, and I will cover this in more depth, like all the stuff I didn't have time now to talk about. Okay, so let's summarize what we've learned today. We must have at least one root model, which is our app model. This is how we begin any Angular application. We need to subdivide our features into submodules when the app gets bigger, and we import only exported declarations because the services are added to the app injector, which is the provider's pool, which is the main like uh, place when <laughs> all of the services place together. So this is the summary of the talk. This is like all the main points, and um, now I hope you can find this like ng module stuff easier to grasp. Thank you very much. If you like this video, like it, share it, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure if you want to see more videos or courses about client-side development, join HiRes.io and watch these other videos over here. Thank you and see you next time.